Earlier in the week, the member for Lingiari uh, indicated he wished to speak on indulgence now, and I give the call to the member for Lingiari. Yeah, thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, last night we saw a very successful collaboration across the parliament to ensure two seats for the Northern Territory yeah. in our future. Yeah. And I want to thank the Prime Minister and the government for supporting the resolution uh, which was formulated by the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, which was put to this parliament and got bipartisan support. It guarantees us in the long term the seat in the Northern Territory. So today, this gave me the opportunity, I thought it might be a good day to do it, to come here and ind indicate that I'm about to roll the swag. Um, I'm so I'm a bit of a relic. Uh, I'm the only one left in this parliament, Senate or House of Reps, from the old parliament house. Uh, so I've taken the decision that I won't be contesting at the next election. I was first elected 33 years ago and I've had 12 elections and 31 years now in the parliament, having lost, sadly, not my delightful day, losing an election in 1996, but being re-elected in 1998. It's been an absolutely an enormous privilege to serve the people of the Northern Territory for that time, and I will continue to serve them until the next election. Of course, Christmas and Cocos Islands are also part, were also part of the seat of the Northern Territory, where I was the single member for four elections, uh, and is also part of the seat of Lingiari, my current electorate, which just to remind you is 1.34 million square kilometres and half the Indian Ocean. <laughs> you know, it's uh, a great, great honour. I heard um, um, there was no one else in this chamber will know, will have heard, watched this speech, but the great Mick Young stood in the dispatch box when he was retiring for parliament and talked about what an honour it is to serve in this parliament. Uh, and it is. It is a huge honour for all of us, no matter where we come from, to serve our communities, to serve the nation in this place. And it's been my honour, my great honour, my great privilege to be able to serve here as a member for the Northern Territory in the seat of Ringiari for now 31 years. I can't think of a greater honour, frankly. I don't think there's any better public services you can do than to speak, we represent your electorate and speak, you re represent your community and speak up on behalf of it. But it doesn't come without cost, as you well know. Um, and this part will be made for very difficult. My family. who have um, shown love, loyalty, sacrifice, forbearance and given me this support over such a long period. Elizabeth, my partner, gave birth to Frankie, our first daughter, a fortnight before <coughs> the first election that I ran in. A fortnight. She was in good shape. And within a fortnight after the election, she was driving with me up the Stewart Highway as part of the new member for the Northern Territory, showing off the child. Frankie is a wonderful young woman. We've had three other children since. They've Tom, Tess, Jack. They've not known anything else but me being a member of parliament. And I have to tell you that that meant many, many years where I was only home eight or nine nights a month. Such was the travel that's required. In fact, I did a bit of a calculation late last year that worked out that over the years I'd been flying in the air for two years. <laughs> Ludicrous. But nevertheless, true. So I want to say thank you, Elizabeth. I love you. As I love you, Frank, Tom, Tess and Jack. 
you are a credit to your mother because she raised you. I was an observer and tolerated, but an observer. I obviously want to thank my friends in the Labor Party and the trade union movement for their ongoing support and the community for their um, working with me over those many years, still to come. My colleagues here in the caucus, you know, I've had a lot of them. <laughs> uh, <and laughs> I, I, I might start <laughs> knowing a lot of them and remember I've seen go across this, from past this to Space Rock now, eight Prime Ministers, starting with Bob Hawke and Paul Keating, obviously, where I had the great privilege to serve in this period of, I'm unique in this place. Well, we're all unique, but in this case, in the Labor Party, because I've been in government for 15 years and a member of the executive for 12 of them. Six as a parliamentary secretary, you know, assistant minister type, and six as a minister in various portfolios. And it has been such an, you, you all know what an honour it is to be able to work with some of the best people in this country who are our people who serve us. And so I take great pleasure uh, in remembering all of those people I've worked with, including my own staff, <coughs> electoral staff, uh, and uh, ministerial staff. I remember two people in particular. And I, was, I want to remember them because they're dead. Carol Burke, who used to work, work for me in my Darwin office, and Jack Crosby, who worked for me, both of whom passed away in the last five years, but both of whom gave sterling loyalty and service to the community as well as to me. We don't get many opportunities to express the disappointments we sometimes have. You know, like over the period, I've seen a bit of shenanigans. I've been shafted a bit. <laughs> don't come as a surprise. Um, but I've hung in. And I think the interesting thing about the parliamentary process and about our caucus is that despite the differences you have, we have a common purpose. Now, there are some who are pretty adventurous and we see them from time to time. They think they're the best thing since sliced bread. They last about two rounds of the revolving door and then they're off. On the other hand, we have people who have commitment on both sides of the parliament. Um, and that we need to recognise that commitment for what it is. And to my colleagues, I'm so pleased 